Hey everyone, don't forget to stay tuned till after the video if you want to find out how to support me or where to follow me on social media. And also, if you like this video and like what I do, like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. Anyways, thank you so much for choosing me, and on with the video. Happy New Year, everybody. I haven't talked to you since last year. <laughs> Shut up, I love the joke. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to another year on this channel. I apologize in advance for my voice. Um, I caught a little bit of a New Year's cold, and uh, I'm doing everything I can. I have my uh, hydration. As you know, I always have my, my good old 50 ounce sitting where in the back. And uh, I've had my vitamin C, I'm taking my medicine, all that good stuff. I wanted to start this year off, and don't mind me, there is the biggest distraction ever sitting right in front of me. And he is messing with my wires, and he is messing with everything. He is deeply curious about me tonight. Um... I wanted to start off this year on a bit of a positive note, a bit of a positive idea. And I think it's because, frankly, we need, <laughs> we need to tackle the Bopo movement. He keeps seeing himself in my mirror. He's fascinated. Do you want to get down? Here. So that way you don't destroy anything on the way down. Oh, and you want to get up. Okay, so one cat down, one cat up. Okay. Um, I can see how tonight is going to go. So I felt like I could give you guys some advice disclaimer, which I know normally I don't do, but disclaimer, none of this is medical advice. This is all purely anecdotal. This is something that has worked for me. This is something that has helped me out because I get a lot of people that ask me, how is it I can be positive? How is it I can be so happy-go-lucky? How I can have a very uh, good outlook on everything. I'm gonna lower this, so this a little, I was a little bright. Um, and you guys seem to really respond well when I did kind of a get ready with me. So I thought maybe I could inspire you in the new year to follow some kind of self-care regimen, which doesn't matter if you're man or woman, uh, you should be following one because it's very good for you. I inspired my husband to do one and his beard feels amazing. That's what I bought him for Christmas was a whole beard oil kit. And last Christmas and the Christmas before, I had actually gotten him other like self-care stuff so I got him stuff to help out with his hair with his face his skin and you do see a bit of a, he's religious about it and I will say it, it definitely helps you see the benefits in his face in his skin um overall and I will tell you as someone with eczema and psoriasis the help in his beard in just the week he has had that kit Love it. So, I figured why we do this because I know how the Bopo gets people. It gets people by manipulating their emotions, right? It gets them by, by catching them in a place where they're kind of like mentally tired. They're mentally weak. Please don't make fun of me. I look terrible in headbands, but it's the easiest way to do my eyebrows. Um, they catch people in a place where mentally they're not okay, right? Like, ooh, that's a look. There we go. Let's try to make this slightly less babushka. Well, that's the best we gonna do. So they try to get them mentally in places where people are already low. They don't know how to self praise. They don't know how to cope in healthy ways. And so the only thing they can do is cope when someone is telling them you're fine. Nothing you're doing is wrong. Everything you're doing is okay. So I have some tips and things that I can recommend that I, I highly recommend people do. And I'm going to see, you can't, you can't see the mirror. Perfect. So, you should be able to hear me, though. One of the things I've done is I call it Gold Star. And this is not just because I love stars. I call it Give Yourself a Gold Star. And how you do it is this. 
Some folks, the only way they can cope with every day is hating themselves. Self-deprecation, mocking themselves, getting mad at themselves, anything along those lines. They never give themselves a break. Now, that's not to say that you should sit there and be like, nothing I do is wrong and I am perfect in every way and everyone else is a bigot. No, that's not what I mean. What I am saying is, is that sometimes you have to appreciate the small things that you did in a day, especially if you do suffer from mental health issues or depression or things like that. Um, Maybe you just right now don't have a lot of self-esteem. So how I practice it is when I was at my worst, I started to give myself little mental gold stars if I did something right. So for instance, Starson, you followed your skincare plan perfectly for a week. You did not skip a day. Gold star. Today I woke up on time. Everyone got fed without a hitch. And I even got myself breakfast. Gold star. I tied my shoes perfectly today. Like those bows, gold star. And the reason why I say it sounds silly, it does. But what you're doing is you're reworking your brain to think positively about the choices you make in a day and to positively reinforce the good choices. Yes, you you tell yourself, hey, Cass, you went to McDonald's. You shouldn't have done that. Hey, Cass, you didn't count out what you were supposed to have for a dessert. You shouldn't have done that. Hey, Cass. You slept a little in today. You skipped giving your animal its supplement. You did this. You did that. You call yourself out. But so that way, the next day, you can be like, hey, I didn't eat anything I wasn't supposed to. Hey, everyone got all their medicine and supplements. Perfectly done. This is me using myself as an example. You can insert what you want anywhere. But the reason why I say that is, When you're looking for affirmations outside of yourself, that's how the Bopo gets you. Because they tell you that society says you're ugly. But the thing is, I've said it before in another video, there's an ass for every toilet. No matter how beautiful you are, no matter how gorgeous you are, no matter how stunning you are, out there, someone will think you're ugly. That's the truth of it. You are not everyone's cup of tea and that's okay but because you may not be most people's cup of tea the bopo has convinced everyone that's your only value and they try to play it off as like isn't it terrible that society only values that way well i value everybody is beautiful everything's gorgeous you don't need to change a thing you're perfect the way you are is that really valuing you though or is that just Painting over the issues. Because how many times, and I've had it personally happen to me, have you had a friend who said, you don't have to change a thing. He was wrong. She was wrong. You are perfect just the way you are. You're gorgeous. And then that same person, either you find out they talk behind your back or when they stop being friends with you, it's like, ugh, that fat ass buck tooth bitch. Oh my God. I can't believe she actually thought this. Ugh. Can you believe she wore that shade of lipstick? She knows it's hideous on her. People that purely affirm you and aren't willing to call out that, yeah, look, are you the most beautiful woman on the planet? Maybe not. But you have a fantastic set of legs. Or you know what? You are super strong. Someone who is honest with you without being cruel, clearly. That's something where you can be that way to yourself. Instead of looking for someone else to say it to you, you can be that person to yourself. Being honest about what are your flaws, but then also being okay that they're your flaws and lifting up what's good. So for instance, I know that I have eczema and psoriasis, as you can see right here. I know you guys don't normally see it on camera because I have my hair, but I got pretty bad eczema and psoriasis. It's a flaw, okay? And I accept that it's a flaw. But I also accept that while other people might see that and mock me for it, like oftentimes during the winter time when I get in altercations, someone makes fun of my dry skin. Well, no shit, I have dry skin. I always have dry skin. I just have to extra moisturize. For instance, 
my Blistex tube is almost dead. Here's the backup Blistex tube ready to go. I just put this in a few days ago. You know, I understand that it's hard to do this. This is easier said than done. But this is the point of willpower, of forcing yourself through, of pushing yourself through these barriers that you've built up either mentally or physically and getting past them and finding a way to move on from them. Because no matter what, at the end of the day, you're going to have insecurities. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have days you don't like yourself. Everyone's like that. My favorite times to look at myself are from fall to winter and somewhat early spring. After that, I feel like a swamp monster from mid-spring all the way until fall. I feel hideous. Why? Because I hate the heat. And I know that my skin will break out more and I feel uncomfortable. I feel swollen. Ugh. So I already know that mentally I'm not going to be as great once the temperature hits 70 degrees. So I find ways to relieve myself. I make sure that I have more ice cold water on hand. I make sure that I take extra care of my skin. I make sure that I have enough powder so I don't feel the sweat. You know, it's just things like that, that you prepare yourself for success rather than failure. That's the first step. Giving yourself self-affirmation, self-coping, and finding that the need to be validated in here. I could talk about it on the religious level, um, which I know my my bestie gothics would like me to do. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I will say if you are someone who is religious like me, on any level, praying to your higher power helps as well. Because Accessing that, understanding there is a power beyond you that can give you good feelings in life, can give you happiness in life, and can give you direction in life, makes you less likely to look for that from outside sources. And by outside sources, I mean people on the internet. You're less likely to need a movement or a community that is going to sit there and tell you, yes, queen, you're gorgeous the way you are. Because you've already got that community. You have it. You have it in your mosque or your temple or your church. Um, maybe uh, you have a small group that you celebrate your religion with. That is something very helpful that you can do. If you're not religious, you don't have to worry about this. Don't don't sit there and start bitching. Star Sun's telling me what to do. Nah, you do you. That's how I see. But I will tell you that's something that benefits me. If you're not religious, well, then just take some time to self-thought. Take some time to assess what's important to you. The next thing you can do is take part in healthy, non-internet hobbies. Take the time to look into things that are not related to the internet. Take some time to do things that are, like, you know, outside of it. Some kind of physical thing or even just a book not a digital book either go to the library and get yourself a physical book here's why I say this we in today's society cannot help it even me and I get very engrossed I have over like 30 or 40 different tabs open of different books I'm reading consecutively um, yay for ADHD and even when I'm in the middle of reading them you're going to get a, a push notification. You're going to get something that's going to tell you what's going on. And then you can't stop thinking about it. Oh, you got to check it. Oh, you got to. Then you get distracted from this thing that's supposed to be taking you away. Even if it's 15 minutes every day, as long as it's something that keeps you off of the internet and puts you centered back into yourself, that is something that's going to be vastly important. And I, I truly do believe that because I do believe that while, yes, maybe I sound hypocritical being someone that earns money on the internet and does all this stuff on the internet, I also do believe in the value of, of unplugging on some level. Especially in this climate where we've got everyone, you know, going at each other's throats over every little thing. And that's the biggest problem, guys, is we have to stop taking part in animosity. 
we have to stop. And I know, again, if you're on my Discord, it sounds rich coming from me. But pick and choose your battles. Pick and choose when you argue with someone online. Pick and choose. And I know it doesn't seem like I do, but I do. There are many, many days that I know I could get in a daily flame war and argument with somebody over anything, even the things I'm passionate about, but I don't. You have to learn to pick when it's time to call someone out or confront somebody. But remember at the end of the day, these are perfect strangers. These are people who have no power over you. They are just somebody out there that is mad and they want a fight. And they're usually going to go and get that fight. But does it really end in something valuable? And that's where you have to sit down and say to yourself, am I going to be able to walk from this conversation laughing and forget about it in 20 minutes? Or is this going to make me upset all day? And there are people that are like that. There are people that can get in an online discourse and it's just fun for them. And as soon as the conversation stops, it leaves their head. I often do that, which is one of the reasons why I'm a screen cap kind of gal. I will screenshot conversations and post them on my Facebook that I've had altercation with people because I find it funny, but also because I forget half of it. And I want to, five years from now, look over and be like, oh yeah, that was funny. But that's me. I know I can walk away from it and forget about it. But even then, I will pick and choose which ones I even take part in because I don't want it to consume me. I don't want it to overwhelm me. I don't want it to be something that I just sit there and, and do all day long. And even I have been, you know, I have been guilty of sometimes taking one too long and, and not listening and saying, oh God, you know, maybe I should stop. And I get it. It can be fun. It can be very fun. Getting in these flame wars can be absolutely entertaining, especially if you're some you're uh, talking with someone who is absolutely uneducated on what you two are conversating about, and you know you're full well right in what you're talking about, and the other person is talking out their ass. So you just enjoy watching them dig their hole. I get it, but at some point it stops being entertaining and it just starts being obsessive, because then you start sitting there going, "Oh my god, I can't wait to see what they say next," and maybe they don't say anything. So now suddenly the conversation has died before you were ready for it, right? Okay, you wanted to go a little longer. You wanted to see them get a little more triggered. So what happens when the conversation dies? Well, let's say they didn't do the logical thing and block you and or, you know, turn off notifications on this conversation. I think I did good on my brows there. Yes, let's see this. Mm -mm. So let's say they... They did not do all those steps. They didn't sit there and and block you and, and make sure you were out of their notifications. Nay, nay, they can still absolutely see everything, but they stopped talking. And you don't like that. So now you're bored. You're sitting there. You're refreshing the page. You go back 20 minutes later because you haven't forgotten. You've still been waiting. Well, they haven't said anything. So what am I going to do? Hmm. I'll make another comment. That's what I'll do. I'll make another comment. I will instigate them more. And see, that's where the problem lies. You go from having a fun little flame war online to now you're getting obsessed. Now you're mad they haven't responded back to you. You haven't gotten that hit. So suddenly you say something back. Maybe they still don't respond. So now you say something again. And that's where it gets bad. When you're sitting there and you're the one consistently wanting the reaction and nobody's giving you that reaction. Nobody's giving you what you want. So you have to create it now. That's where it gets obsessive. And so my suggestion to you is, guys, going into 2023, let's, let's not. Let's not do that. Let's, uh, let's take the time to pick our battles. Decide when a battle is important, when a fight is important, when a drama is important, and also understand 
even if it technically is an important battle, right? So let's say it's somebody that you're close with or somebody that is a real life detriment to you, right? At what point does that argument with this person go from it's important I had to say it because they were talking smack about me to maybe I should involve the police. And I say this because it does turn to that. I have three friends I can think of right off the top of my head that have had situations where it went from flame war online to I need to make an, I need to make a uh, a complaint. Some I might have to press charges. At least file a restraining order. And that's the problem, guys. You have to know that sometimes it is better to leave it alone, even if it's somebody important. You know, you think about these Bopo girls that constantly talk about how people online are so mean to them and, and they think that any form of discourse, because usually they're, lef they're leftists and liberals, any form of discourse online is violence. So these are people who one minute you could be arguing with them about something you know, Bopo related. And the next minute they could be sitting there saying that you're, if you recall correctly, an ableist or a racist. Um, or they can say that you're uh, this kind of phobic. And then they can start trying to get you fired from your job. They can start trying to get you, and I'm talking from personal experience. You have to learn to pick where you want the discourse to be. And I'm speaking about this because the Bopo, I don't know if they're in death throes or if they're just getting started, frankly. Because the stuff I've seen in the last few weeks coming out of the Bopo, frankly, I was shocked is still being said. And it's because these people... They live in a world of delusion. And if we want to bring reality back and beat their ideology and show them it's not true, we can't just attack them. We can't just slap them metaphorically and make fun of them and uh, hope for the best. That won't work. It won't solve anything. What it will do is it'll martyr them. Remember back to my Andrew Tate video. You have to be careful what you say. Are you sure what you're saying? Are you positive of the facts? I'm bringing all this up because these are ways you combat these ideologies. These are ways that you come at them by being less argumentative and less confrontational, by being self uh reliant on validation and on self-worth by being able to label what your value is and where your flaws are at. These are all important things. And I want you guys to carry these into 2023 because as we're in this year, if you're an American, this is a landmark year. This is a big one because that means next year is the elections, guys. And, oh, I picked the wrong year. And more than ever, this one's going to be a big one. And a lot of people are using ideology and, and emotion to manipulate all of us. And we all know the Bobo is massively manipulative. They're taking advantage of people who are weak and scared. And they are taking them and they are leading them down paths of dependency on the government, dependency on all these other things. I said it in another video on TikTok. Um, we're sitting here talking about how the diet industry is we're 70 billion a year. But we negate the story and the uh, fact that the fast food industry is so prolific and how the medical industry makes so much money off of the people who get sick from fast food industry. You know, it's stuff like that. We just need to be more vigilant on how we're treating ourselves and how we're 
mentally preparing ourselves. The second half of this video is actually a little bit more wholesome. And again, this is, this is the point of this video. The point of this video is to lead you into 2023, hopefully helping you to do some more wholesome things for yourself. And what I did was I garnered, uh, if you recall, if you follow me on Instagram, the other day, I, <laughs> I right before Christmas, recorded a very nice video where I actually went over all of these things listed here and that video disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. It's gone. What I did was I gathered a list of, from what I can remember, and I haven't gone over the list again, of YouTube channels that give me give me the good feels and I'm going to leave out all the ones that are political or controversial in some way and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because these are channels that I'm recommending to you to get away from politics to get away from animosity and all the different stuff all these channels are educational. They have fun involved in them. They're, they, these are channels that I turn to when I want to just indulge in feel good content. Now, a lot of you folks, I'm gonna start off right here. A lot of you folks ask me about animal advice and I'm gonna start right off with these animal channels because they give the best uh just information overall on animals it's me or the dog my cat from hell or jackson galaxy upstate canine academy jonas black eric and capri or eric and capri the pup the kitten lady girl with the dogs I believe I'm saying this right, way top or what up, W-A-T-O-P, right here. Clint's Reptiles, this one is purely, it is, okay, so they are facts, but this is purely for the fun of it. The Frank One, one of the best channels on the internet, point blank, and Extinct Zoo. Going on the other side of it these are all channels ranging from food to cinema that when I watch them I just I feel better these are kind of people that make me really happy these first ones uh the first few are literally channels that I try not to miss any these first four I try not to miss a single episode you have uh, Tasting History with Max Miller. That man is pun unintended chef's kiss, okay? Right here is one of my favorite things on the internet. And if you want to know what that's about, my God, you need to watch him. I love Max. He absolutely fills my internet time with joy. Pasta Grammar, I have spoken about them in the past. Uh, Ava and Harper are amazing. Emmy makes, uh, this is a woman out of Rhode Island and I just enjoy her because literally she thankfully will try all the things that I will never put in my mouth. <laughs> that sounds bad, but either way, definitely watch her. And my Zen channel, the one that is absolutely, I love him to death, uh, the hoof GP and, uh, he trims cow hooves, but he is the best there ever was. I didn't even know it was a thing until I saw his channel. And now I, I just can't resist it. I, I, I find myself watching him all the time. Then we go down the list. This is just going to be, uh, in no particular order, the white house on the hill, absolute history, weird history, nutty history, uh, and casual geographic, Lindsay, Nicole, um, Eons with PBS, they are all fantastic. I can't, I can't say enough. Um, you learn so much. Then you have Urban Rescue Ranch. 
totally again just for the fun if you want to just see something super fun urban rescue ranch going on down from there these are all just people that just make me smile and i just enjoy their content regardless of of any other affiliation they have uncle roger or mr nigel Ung. joshua weissman jamie french dylan hollis bailey sarian bows versus the world cinema sins cinema wins alex myers dylan is in trouble young young tales ice cream sandwich uh let me explain studios emma Ricciu, scribble juice jaden animations saber spark Natirix, Fernanda Diaz artwork, and Smarty Pants. Smarty Pants is a bit different from the rest of them. Smarty Pants does a lot of miraculous ladybug, uh, um, whatchamacallit, uh, reviews. But I will say he also reviews a lot of other things as well. And I just genuinely enjoy his very dry delivery of everything. Um, these are all channels that I recommend. I have purposely left out most of the channels that are offensive. And if you've noticed, that includes most of my friends. Um, and the reason why I've left them out is because one, you guys already know all of them. But I will, in a quick shoot off, I think I have them all. <laughs> I think I do. Ah! Um, but I will also put some of these people in the actual... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit it, the conversation box below the description box. Um, oh, also, I did forget, I did forget a couple of not, uh, whatchamacallit it, the, um, more entertaining ones. The Men Try videos. Oh, I'm going to screw this up. Beryl Sharashewski. I think I didn't screw it up. And Rachel and June and all of their respective channels. Um... Call Me Chris. Fantastic channels. Um, these are all just people who make my internet life better. And this is not to say that all my friends from Gothics to Leon to uh, uh, Dangerous Rhetoric to Real Femme Sapien, any of them. This is not to say that any of these people don't make my internet life better. But they're all people that are still in my circle. You all hear about them all the time one way or another. Um... You know, from Christian to Mike to Shags, uh, you got Amanda, you got Michelle. I've got all people that really do help me out directly. But these are channels who don't know who I am. These are people who have no idea who I am. And, and, and that's the benefit of it. These are not political people. And the reason why I lift, list all these channels off to you is, one, I'm hoping in the new year that you'll find one of these channels and they will give you a little bit of joy and a little bit of distraction from the animosity going on. And I guess that's, that's again, another point I'm making. The only way we're going to beat the ideologies like the Bopo and like the insane left and all these different things is by being more positive in all aspects by not just coming online to find what's the newest drama, what's the newest problem, what's the newest issue, but by finding joy even on the everyday and finding joy in something other than just the newest fight, the newest argument, the newest issue. I am able to keep sane with utilizing all these different things I've told you guys. Um, there is one last lesson and I've given it before and I'm going to give it again. This is something that I don't know if it's going to help with that, but it does help with your everyday. Remember invisible rules. These are important to fight against because invisible rules will hold you back from things you didn't realize they were holding you back from. For instance, an invisible rule for me is I can't draw that because I don't normally draw that. So I don't normally draw monsters, so I can't draw them. It wouldn't make any sense for me to do it. There's no actual factual reason why I shouldn't draw a monster, but I've told myself, can't do it. 
It's not something I'm able to do. That's an invisible rule. An invisible rule can be silly or it can be large. It's something where someone looks at you and makes a very obvious statement and you look up and go, I never thought of that. I didn't, and the only thing is because you did think of it. You thought you were allowed. And that's all. Don't let the invisible rules keep you back. Don't let silly things that are not real hold you back. And I hope I haven't rambled on and I hope I've made sense this entire time. Because the main message I want to put in this year, or right now, is that I want you all to have a successful 2023. That's what I want. I want all of us to have a very successful new year. And I want us to have even with all the bullshit going on. I want us to have a better upcoming year. And the only way we're going to do that is by working together and by not allowing insanity to be the only thing that dictates our movements and the only thing that dictates what we do and how we interact with everybody. That's the important thing. We can't let the insanity of what's going on in this world right now keep us from still being normal people with normal hobbies and normal joys. And I get it with inflation and everything else going on right now to my fellow Americans. It's hard right now. I totally get it. But there are ways around it. There are ways to solve it. There are assets and resources at your disposal to not let it take such a foothold that it is detrimental to your mental health, is detrimental to your physical health, and is detrimental to your life. That's all I'm saying, guys. So I, I really do welcome you into the new year. I hope this video has helped you. And I do hope you look into some of these channels that I've listed. And if I have the afterthought and the intelligence, I will have listed them all on screen with images. But we'll see, because in my cold, addled mind, maybe I forget. Either way, guys, once again, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, if you like that video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, help me out with that algorithm. I want to first off thank all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. You help fund me. You help help me do this. Uh, thank you to Lisa. Emile DeVry, Edie, Anna Mae Chan, Lady Derpy, Chaco Hooligan, Valspara, Amelia, Esteban Laura, Gina Cena, Rox, Pink Dolphin Milk 65, AJ Lare, Becoming a Better Me, Jenny Eller, Selma, Sarah F., Cindy Lowe, and Desert Jack. Guys, if you want to join my Patreon, it starts as low as a dollar a month, goes all the way up to 20, whatever else you want to give me. And we have a lot of different good perks. You can get drawings from me, you get uh, patron exclusive artwork, and I try to get my videos out as early as possible to my patrons, although I have been failing a bit lately. If you like a lot of the merchandise that I wear, please make sure to check out No System. That is nosisnose.com. A lot of my shirts and jewelry do come from there. And here is all of my social media. If you enjoy my artwork, if you enjoy my rants, and if you just enjoy me, you can follow me on all of these different networks. I am like fly poo. I'm everywhere. Don't forget to check out my older videos or my most recent video, which will be right here. And otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an amazing day. And don't forget to tell the people that are important to you that you love them and to be safe. So, guys, I love you. Be safe. Have a wonderful day. Bye.